After years of rumors and speculation, the Resident Evil 4 remake is around the corner, slated to come out in March of 2023. The original Resident Evil 4 is still considered a landmark game that reinvented the Resident Evil series and shook up the game industry as a whole, ushering waves of third-person shooters and setting a new standard for what Resident Evil would be for years. With anticipation for this game being very high, I thought it was a great time to look back on the other Resident Evil remakes, currently consisting of Resident Evils 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to discuss these games in order of release, and in this video I'll be focusing on the remake of Resident Evil 1, released for the GameCube. March of 2002. At the start of the 21st century, Capcom entered an exclusivity deal with Nintendo that would result in several new games intended to either remain exclusive to the GameCube or to be released on the GameCube first and ported to the PlayStation 2 later on. This deal resulted in Resident Evil 2, 3, and Code Veronica being ported to the GameCube, as well as development for Resident Evil 4, the remake of 1, and Resident Evil 0, which was actually being started from scratch for the GameCube following its failing development on the N64. The director of RE1, Shinji Mikami, stated that he did not want to simply port RE1 as he felt its graphics had aged poorly and that new players would not appreciate it. This resulted in the developers taking advantage of the GameCube's capabilities to bring the remake closer to Mikami's original version of what RE1 would be. While at the time of RE1's release it was considered scary and brought the burgeoning survival horror genre to a whole new level, its dated visuals and campiness likely wouldn't hold up against what would come even one console generation later. In 2009, the game would also get ported to the Wii alongside Resident Evil Zero, both of which were dubbed Resident Evil Archives. The remake retained the DNA of the original but reinvented it in many ways. The first obvious difference is that the remake looks much better than the original. While it kept the pre-rendered backgrounds and fixed camera angles, the graphical capabilities of the GameCube allowed for more realistic visuals and high contrast between well-lit and dark areas. The original game was mostly pretty bright with very blocky character models and stiff, awkward animations. When the jump to the GameCube was made, it was possible to have scenarios where you wandered through dark, ominous hallways where terrifying creatures could jump out at you when you were already on edge. The once blocky and awkward looking enemies were redesigned to look gruesome and frightening. It's worth stating that the visuals of the remake still look incredible by today's standards, and with the release of the HD remaster in 2015, they were even able to give it a bit of a modern facelift, making an already fantastic looking game look even better. A change made to accompany the new visuals is that the tone is less goofy this time around. The voice acting in the original is notoriously bad and campy, and there are classic examples of hilariously delivered dialogue that have pretty much been memed to death, although for me they still never get old. The remake opted for a somewhat more serious approach, but that can only mean so much when it comes to Resident Evil. The gameplay kept the essence of the original and had everyone's favorite thing to hate about classic survival horror, the tank controls. In short, tank controls describe a control scheme that means where you move the character isn't necessarily relevant to the camera, but that your movement is bound by the direction your character is facing. Moving left on your analog stick or d-pad doesn't move you left on the screen, it turns your character left and now you will use up to go forward. It's a bit hard to explain, but if you try it, it starts to make more sense. A welcome change, however, was the addition of the 180 quick turn, which was not featured in the original Resident Evil. Instead of having to completely rotate your character 180 degrees to go in the opposite direction, you can now do a turn by pressing down and another button at the same time to quickly orient your character the other way. The remake also retained other classic frustrations like limited inventory, extremely limited ammo and healing items, a magical item box where you can store your items and retrieve them later, and saves limited by items called ink ribbons, which, yes, you can run out of. Of course, while I call these frustrations, they are obviously intended to cause a level of panic as you regularly have to make tough decisions like which items you want to pick up, if and when you want to save, and deciding if it's worth it to make the dangerous trek back to an item box if you need an item or need to offload one from your inventory. Something introduced in the remake that shakes up the gameplay a bit is the introduction of defense items. Defense items are one-time use items that you can pick up in the game that don't get included in your main inventory, but rather in an offhand slot, and they are used when an enemy grabs you to get them off. In contrast, in the original, you can shake a zombie off of you by using a method I will call good luck. If you're playing as Chris or Jill, one of these that you can pick up is a dagger, which will get the creature off you and do a bit of damage. Jill also has access to tasers, and Chris has access to flash grenades, which he will shove into a zombie's mouth when it goes off, decapitate it. Speaking of decapitation, attempting to do so in the remake is highly advisable, as decapitating a zombie is one of the few ways to prevent it from coming back as one of the remake's most terrifying additions. The infamous Crimson Head. Crimson heads are zombies that become animated again after already being killed, and have a red appearance. They can run, they take more damage to butt down, and they do more damage than a regular zombie. This, in my opinion, is one of the most stressful new additions to the remake, as at this point, you use the zombies generally just kind of lumbering around, and you may even have a grasp on how to run around them. If you don't know about crimson heads going in, you will be in for a shock when you see a zombie you thought you didn't have to worry about anymore, sprinting at you from around the corner as you enter a room. You can prevent a zombie from becoming a crimson head by decapitating it, generally most easily done by a perfectly aimed upward shot from the shotgun, burning the body by using a fuel canteen which can be refilled a limited number of times and it takes up an inventory slot, or by killing the zombie with an incendiary shell from the grenade launcher if playing as Jill. 
It's also important to discuss that the remake expanded the original setting of the Spencer Mansion quite a bit by adding new areas, new puzzles, and remixing where items are found. While many of the rooms and areas will be familiar if you played the original, memorizing everything in that game will not carry you through the remake as it was intended to have its own host of surprises. One of these surprises that is completely new is the subplot involving Lisa Trevor, a harrowing story surrounding an enemy that you will encounter in the game three times. I won't go into the complete story of Lisa Trevor in this video, but suffice it to say that running into her and looking into her past will give you chills, and her addition certainly adds a pretty disturbing element to the game's already oppressive and eerie atmosphere. Now that I've already discussed many of the major changes that the remake features in comparison to the original, I'd like to discuss my opinion of this game. It's no secret at this point that the game has seen critical acclaim and is a fan favorite in the Resident Evil series, and I will say that I... Agree. The changes that the remake included improved on everything in the original and brought an experience that, while like its predecessor, is vastly superior. The Resident Evil remake is hauntingly beautiful, and if it's your first time playing, you're sure to get immersed in the world it presents. The gameplay can be tough to get the hang of at first, but it's certainly a learning curve worth getting through. The feeling of conquering these scenarios grants you a bit of accomplished relief as you move on to the next terrifying section. And I do think this game is still scary and sure to scare new players who want to experience the fear and challenge it gives. In my opinion, the game perfectly balances all of what you'll find in a classic Resident Evil experience with gorgeous visuals and a ton of replayability to boot. As you start to memorize the routes through the game, you get almost addicted to running through it again and again, feeling like you're on the way to mastering it while still soaking in its desolate, ominous atmosphere. The aforementioned 2015 HD remaster also includes alternate controls that don't follow the tank control scheme, so if you're struggling with the tank controls, I'd say it's worth giving the alternate controls a try. These can also feel sort of awkward as they clash a bit with the fixed camera angles at times, and you might find yourself snapping into the wrong direction after the camera switches, but again, the learning curve is worth it to experience this game. The Resident Evil remake took the classic, albeit dated, survival horror staple of the original and turned it into what I consider to be a chilling survival horror masterpiece. And when it comes to that old school Resident Evil experience, this is practically the pinnacle. It also just might be my favorite Resident Evil game in the series, so if you're itching to give that classic RE vibe a try, look no further. To relate this back to the Resident Evil 4 remake, from what we know of the game so far, I think it will be similar to the remake of 1, in that a lot of the core gameplay and mechanics will remain the same as its original counterpart, but with updated graphics, extra content, and some new story to us. However, we can obviously anticipate that the visuals and design of the game will be more in line with what we've seen in the 2 and 3 remakes. As Resident Evil 4 kicked off the over-the-shoulder view found in those two remakes, I'd imagine that it will already feel pretty familiar to everyone that has played 4. I'm excited to see the ways that the devs leverage the RE engine to reimagine the monsters and environments from 4 and make Leon's journey all the more horrifying. Thank you for watching, and next time I'll be discussing the Resident Evil 2 remake, where we'll find an experience that diverts from its original counterpart in some very drastic ways. See you all next time when we return to a more modern world of survival horror.